detention mandates, and furthermore, that the Secretary did that while underutilizing detention, not put itself in the position to referee whether in a particular case the executive was in fact recognizes the gentleman from North Carolina, the sponsor of the legislation, Mr. Bishop, for an opening statement. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thanks also to the gentleman from Texas, Chip Roy, for joining me as co-sponsor. Um, this bill should enjoy bipartisan support in the interest of vindicating the rule of law, the constitutional role of the Congress, and the avoidance of interbranch conflict. In United States versus Texas last June, the Supreme Court held that state attorneys general lack standing to sue the Department of Homeland Security when the department adopts operating practices that violate, in fact, explicitly and directly contradict statutory commands of the Congress. Uh, there, the issue was detention mandates, statutes that, commanded the that command the secretary to detain until removal certain criminal aliens having been convicted and incarcerated for listed crimes or aggravated felonies and terroristic activity, having been released from state custody, and also aliens subject to final orders of removal. The Secretary, you see, had issued guidelines saying those factors would never alone be sufficient to cause the detention of any person. What Congress had mandated, the Secretary of Homeland Security simply countermandated. The Federal District Court and the Court of Appeals found that the Secretary's guidelines violated specific detention mandates and furthermore that the Secretary did that while underutilizing detention space and repeatedly asking Congress to provide less detention space resources. The Supreme Court didn't disagree with any of those findings. It simply said that because the executive retains some prosecu prosecutorial discretion even under Congress's statutory mandates the court could not put itself in the position to referee whether in a particular case the executive was in fact exercising prosecutorial discretion or flouting acts of Congress in favor of a different re regime of its own choosing. In other words, rule of law or rule of man. The court observed that such disputes generally must be left to resolution between the Congress and the executive, that if Congress wants its laws to be followed, it must impeach or cut off funding or other drastic actions, almost all of which have undesirable collateral effects, which Justice Alito characterized as Congress going to war with the executive. We've done that just this week in the articles of impeachment against Alejandro Mayorkas, only the second cabinet officer ever to be impeached. Many members of the minority, in fact of the majority, commented that this is an unsatisfactory state of affairs. Everyone should agree with that but it is not acceptable to allow the executive to ignore Congress's laws at will. Now, in United States versus Texas, the concurrence of Justice Kavanaugh pointed to a path that might avoid the constitutional conflict between the Congress and the executive. He said, in holding that Texas and Louisiana lack standing, we do not suggest that federal courts may never entertain cases involving the executive branch's alleged failure to make more arrests or bring more prosecutions. And then skipping, as the Solicitor General points out, that's the Biden administration, Solicitor General. As the Solicitor General points out, the standing, the standing analysis might differ when Congress elevates de facto injuries to the status of legally cognizable injuries redressable by a federal court. For example, Congress might specifically authorize suits against the executive branch by a defined set of plaintiffs who have suffered concrete harms from executive under enforcement and specifically authorize the judiciary to enter appropriate orders requiring additional arrests or prosecutions by the executive branch. And in, he went on to say that in these cases, the relevant statutes do not supply such specific authorization. Uh, this bill, now before the committee, does that in an appropriately balanced way. It specifically authorizes suits against the executive branch by a narrowly defined set of plaintiffs state attorneys general, and authorize the judiciary to enter appropriate orders. This language is added to detention, parole, and visa sanction provisions where Congress has commanded certain actions from the executive. Courts still have room in every case to examine whether particular executive branch decisions are bona fide exercise of discretion or attempts categorically to change the law in defiance of Congress. Finally, this is extremely timely 
Uh, just this week, the 11th Circuit sent back to district courts in Florida other immigration cases brought by state attorney gen attorneys general to be reconsidered as to whether those courts had jurisdiction because of the standing issue. There, the issue was not the Department of Homeland Security's categorical refusal to take certain aliens into custody per Congress's mandate, but the categorical release of migrants already in DHS custody into the interior via the Alternatives to Detention program, replete with ankle bracelets and cell phones. So the issue is, should we facilitate correction of the executive branch overreaches of authority by means short of drastic constitutional conflict? To ask the question is to answer it. Attorneys general have asked for this, and certainly um, we want and want to afford the opportunity to seek relief from courts on behalf of their states that's when they suffer specifically concentrated injuries. And it, I believe those in the minority may want this in the next administration. So I urge the committee favorably, favorably to consider uh, this bill, Mr. Chairman, and with that, I yield back. Gentlemen, you'll not put itself in the position to referee whether in a particular case the executive was in fact Congress. Uh, there, the issue was detention mandates, statutes that commanded the secretary that command the secretary to detain until removal. Fact, explicitly and directly contradict statutory commands of the. Recognizes the gentleman from North Carolina, the sponsor of the legislation, Mr. Bishop, for an opening statement. Detention space and repeatedly asking Congress to provide less detention space. Um, this bill should enjoy bipartisan support in the interest of vindicating the rule of law resources. The Supreme Court didn't disagree with any of those findings in favor of a different re regime of its own choosing. In other words, rule of law, prosecu prosecutorial discretion, even under Congress's statutory mandates, the court couldn't just as Alito characterize as Congress going to war with the executive or rule of man. The court observed that such disputes generally must be left off the constitutional role of the Congress and the avoidance of interbranch conflict. Certain criminal aliens having been convicted and incarcerated for listed crimes or actions, almost all of which have undesirable collateral effects, which generally